Hey YouTubers, it's me, Lonnie Clark again. That's for art. I'm going to continue reading. Uh, I want to finish this up. I'm completely sick of dealing with this, so I'm going to read as often as I can. Human Radiation Studies, Remembering the Early Years, Oral History of Dr. John W. Goffman, MD, PhD. Let me cough a minute, I'm sorry. Conducted December 20th, 1994. United States Department of Energy, Office of Human Radiation Experiments, June 1995. This would never have happened in today's world, but thank God it did. So this is the last sentence Dr. Goffman said. You know what the sanctions were, don't you? New subtitle. AEC responds with sanctions to Goffman's public dissent. 1972. Gourley, uh, maybe, maybe I'll just put glasses on on top. That's what I do when I'm really here, because I got to see. Tell us in your own words, Goffman. Well, actually, in 1970, during most of these TV battles and battles in public meetings, and by 1972, they had already taken away Tamplin's 13 people. When they were asked by the press, they said, he didn't want them anymore. A total fabrication. Total fabrication. In 1972, Roger Batzel came to see me. He said, Jack, I have something I have to tell you. What's that, Roger? Last year in 71, the Atomic Energy Commission came to us and said we should take away your research funds. The $250,000 a year that I was spending that was on the Gourley, that was on the chromosome work? Goffman, right. He said, we told him that we disagree with, with your positions on nuclear power and hazards calculations. What you're doing in that. We think your chromosome work is very good and we're not going to take away your money. He said, they went away and they've come back now and said, Take away John Goffman's $250,000, or if you don't do that, we'll just delete $250,000 from the lab, lab budget, and you can lose 13 other people. So I said, Roger, that won't fly. I made a mistake. I should have taken it up with at the Academic Senate. Excuse me, I need to get some water. Mm. Wow. Nice to have water still, huh? I made a mistake. I should have taken it up at the Academic Senate. I should have made a hell of a big issue with the university. I didn't. I don't know why I didn't, because I think we could have really blown the whole thing wide open at that point. So big fucking fail. That's when you fail. At least you recognize it. Instead, I said, look, nobody's going to lose their job because of me. I will see that if I can, I will see if I can get money from somewhere else. If they can get the money from, say, National Cancer Institute, can I take all the equipment? I had an awful lot of gear that I was using, high-powered gear. Can I take that into Berkeley with me when I go back to my full-time professorship? He said, no. He said, excuse me, he said, sure, that's no problem. So now when I went to Washington and got to see Frank Rauscher, who was the head of the National Cancer Institute at the time, one of my former students, who was the associate director of the National Cancer Institute, arranged the meeting. I asked Rauscher, you know about my conflict with the AEC? He said, yes. I described the chromosome program and he said, that's exactly the kind of program we need. We have some work going on at Yale on breast cancer, but this would fit in very well. If you want to do the chromosome part of it, I said, yeah, I'd love to. He said, what would it cost us? About $250,000 a year is what I would need to do to the work. He said, I'm very optimistic, but I have to let you know in a few weeks. 
I left and saw Roger Batzel. I told Roger, Roger was pretty optimistic, and he said, fine, let's see what happens. Four or six weeks passed and I heard nothing. I just wrote a very brief note to Rasha saying there's no hurry and that and nothing desperate that needs to be done, but I would like to know how things are coming out on that possibility. He didn't answer. I got a letter from the third echelon deputy saying, Thank you very much for your inquiry. The work you're suggesting is not in the main line interest of the National Cancer Institute. But if you have any other ideas, please let us know. What obviously happened was that Rasher must have talked to some people about the possible grant. And I think they probably said, hey, this guy is giving the Atomic Energy Commission fits. What do we need him for? So I never got the grant. When I got that letter from the deputy, I told Roger Batzel and dissolved my program. We did it that day. People were reassigned to other things. They didn't want to fire me from the lab. It was just something they didn't, they didn't want to get caught doing. So Roger said, well, you know, you're welcome to stay. I said, that's very nice, but there's not much reason for me to stay without my research program. I'd come all the way out here to Livermore for what? I said, I need about six months to clear things up and then I'll go back to Berkeley full time. In fact, they found me some nice rooms in Building 90 on the hill. You don't need to, you don't need to even stay the next full six months. We'll set you up in Berkeley for that period. Then I moved down to Donner after that. Return to Berkeley. That's the new subtitle, Return to Berkeley. Huh. Did you come back to the Lawrence Berkeley Laboratory? Goffman, building 90 for four or five or of those six months. Hefner, how did the rest of the community treat you, say the old scientists and the regents? Goffman, I never brought it up with the regents. I think I made a big mistake not to bring it up with the academic senate and the regents. I think I would have gotten a very fair hearing from them. I don't know why I didn't do that. Lawrence Berkeley Laboratory. I have a lot of friends at LBL. Ed McMillan and I ended, did not end up friendly. Ernest Lawrence and I are very good friends. But Ed was angry with me because in the days when Charlie Schwartz was raising all kinds of hell during the whole thing at the university uh, reconstitution, they wanted to hold an outdoor rally and a speech at LBL on the hill. Charlie invited me. I said, sure, I'll talk. Ed called and said, you can't talk. I said, Ed, you're just behaving like an ass. I'm going to talk. He said, you just shouldn't. I forbid it. He said, it doesn't matter. I did talk, but we never got past that. I like his wife, Elsie. Hefner. Why did Dr. McMillan say that? That's pretty contrary to his own politics. Goffman. I don't know. I honestly don't know. I couldn't believe Edward McMillan. I knew him quite well. I just couldn't believe Ed McMillan was telling me that. John Lawrence cooled off considerably towards me. Hmm. Hefner. He took a turn to the right during the free speech movement. Goffman. Yes, he never was outright unfriendly to me in, after the controversy, but he was cool. Hefner. How about Hardin Jones? Goffman. We stayed friends. I didn't see Hardin too much. He didn't agree. Hefner. He also took a turn to the right. Goffman. Yes, Hardin was so wrong on some of those drug things. We were quite friendly in the end. I've seen Helen since then. Andrew, Tobias, and I were never very close. Tobias tends to be defensive of the atomic energy establishment. It never hurt anybody. Tobias's co-workers, like Grammy Welch, 
is a great admirer of my work. The Donner people, of course, are good friends of mine. Hefner, Eleanor Blakely, Goffman. I don't know her. Alex Nichols is a very close friend of mine. I don't know how many people on the hill. I don't know how many people on the hill. I don't think that most of them even know about the controversial years. Do you? Hefner. Yes. You think they do? By all means. Really? Everybody knows. That's Hefner. Everybody knows. Goffman. I didn't know that. Hefner. Yes. Back at the headquarters even, there are boxes and boxes of stuff. Hefner. Oh, yeah. Goffman. Oh, really? Hefner. It's a ton of written stuff. Gorley. I have with me the memorandum when they were evaluating your chromosome program. That's, that's Gorley saying that, too. Goffman. They sent it out to their committee that conducted the evaluation. They also had an inspector general's report on whether we were harassed. Did you know about that? Gorley, no. Goffman, the inspector general of the AEC said he could find no evidence of harassment. Hmm. Like no evidence of uh, harm to human health. How long? Good, only 11 minutes. Reflections on career decisions. I don't know if I read that okay, but it was really about him, them stating, I guess, that they found tons and tons of work. The controversy. I'm not clear I know about the controversy. <laughs> so new subtitle here. Reflections on career decisions. Like being a dumbass and not talking to the university when they blackmailed you. Uh, reflections on career decisions. Hefner. Given all of that and given the subsequent years, would you do it all again? Would you take any different turns? Goffman. That's a good question. By the way, I want to tell you one little thing. When the 50th anniversary of the plutonium Discover, well, excuse me, when the 50th anniversary of the plutonium discovery rolled around, I got an invitation and I was a little delayed in replying. Glenn Seaborg called me up and said, we didn't get your reply that you're coming. You're coming, aren't you? I said, oh yes, I'm coming. Well, we want you to sit at the head table. I did, and I gave a talk. It was like the old times. Gorley, when was this? Goffman, two years ago, two or three, the 50th anniversary of plutonium, the chemical potentials, the chemistry department has a picture of Arthur Wall, Seberg, and me standing in room 307 where we did all the work. And you know, it's like nothing ever happened. In answer to your question, Lori, there are so many accidents of life, like Juliet T. Brown not throwing me out of her office at the Western Reserve University. It turns out she could have. No, no chance you're getting to, into med school, and I might have forgotten the whole thing and never have gone that route. There was deciding in the first year of med school to try to come out to California and study chemistry. Then the miscerebration in in taking me the Livermore assignment. You mean, would I do the argument again? The work at Livermore itself? Hefner, yes. Was it a misstep for you to take that job? Sounds like your intuition already told you despite all these reassurances. Goffman, yes, I think there was enough to say that if you're going to have to count on those reassurances, don't do it. I think I'd probably on that ground would not have. I thought it was a little more than just a chancy decision. Hefner, it's also thrown you into international and national, Goffman, this disrepute? Hefner, 
into the whole controversy about these Goffman. Let me say this, Lori. I don't mean I don't mean about this ta taping. This is just how I feel about these things as a person. I tend to try to evaluate my life, whether it's been worthwhile or not. And somehow it makes a difference to me whether I think it's been worthwhile. I feel very proud about the lipoprotein work. It was good work. We were castigated for that work, in case you didn't know it. Hefner. No, I didn't know it. Goffman. All kinds of criticisms by others in the field, largely jealous. Hefner. Because that work is still continuing. Goffman. People like Don Fredericks, the ex-head of the National Institute of Health, wrote me up in one of the issues of Circulation, April 1993 supplement, like a breath of fresh air. I get fantastic praise for the work from very highly placed people. I'm a fair-haired boy in the heart disease thing. I'm proud of that work. It's good work. About the current controversies, I take it very seriously. I feel I made my contribution to pay my way, so to speak, as an individual with the lipoprotein heart, heart disease work. I don't think I have to apologize to anybody. My son said, do you think you did anything in your lifetime that was worth anything? And I said, yes, I do. New subtitle. Uh, we're at 16 minutes, so I'm going to stop here and um, and load this one up and then I'm going to do another reading so so we don't have one big long half hour reading so put your courage feet on you guys talk to you soon ciao